Hello, dear viewers, and welcome back to This Week in Canada, the last pre-election episode of This Week in Canada. I thank you very much for joining me. And before we get started, let's give a big round of applause, a big thank you to our friends at Rumble. Rumble is a competitor to YouTube. They're doing very well, and they're here to provide a choice. Choices are important, and you don't want some site like YouTube to just run a monopoly on the content you watch. So go give Rumble. Subscribe to us on Rumble. Give them a watch. It's all the content that we post here, and we will be doing more. And, uh, yeah, just go check them out in the links below. Also, a big shout-out to our sponsor, Kubera, the world's most modern portfolio tracker. Track all your assets in one place, traditional and crypto. And it's as easy as working a spreadsheet. That's right. Just go and manage your portfolio the way you would anywhere else, but better, simpler at Kubera. You can get started by checking out the links below. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about all the big, exciting news. Um, so, this is the last week of the election campaign, although we don't really know uh, when the results will be in. We know that on Monday, uh, they are going to be... Uh, they're going to conduct the polling on Monday. That's election day, I guess you can call it. But results day won't be until uh, maybe a day or two after. Uh, obviously, this election is going to have a lot of mail-in voting. Let's keep our fingers crossed that nothing uh, goes a little wonky there. I think it will be fine, I hope. Five million ballots are going to be printed compared to the usual uh, 50,000. So that's quite an uptick, but not too much uh, focus on that. We're not going to talk about that too much. We've covered it in previous videos. But... What we've seen in the polling has pretty much uh, led myself and most pundits, I guess, or anybody that's following the news to believe that this is a pretty close race. We're in a statistical dead heat. Uh, polls show now that the Trudeau liberals are generally polling ahead a little bit. We could put a couple on the screen here. Screen here. Um, polls don't seem to exceed anywhere above 33 for either party. Some party... Uh, some parties are polling at 33, 32. The conservatives and liberals uh, keep taking the lead from one another. Um, seat count, different story. Uh, obviously, in the 2019 election, uh, Andrew Scheer, very interesting, exciting candidate, <laughs> Andrew Scheer, uh, won the popular vote with his uh, platform that was, uh, you know, like I said, very exciting and interesting and cutting edge. Uh, won the popular vote, lost in seats, formed a very strong uh, opposition party. This is looking like a similar story. So if we pull it up on the screen here, we are seeing a decrease in seats for the liberals, an increase in seats for the conservatives. Uh, some projections are showing a conservative minority. Some are showing, again, a liberal minority. Some of the more dire ones showing a big jump in seats for the liberals. So it sounds like a lot of guesswork. I'm going to guess if you're a polling company and you, every day your results are kind of uh, scattered throughout the place and some are saying a Trudeau majority all the way to a, a conservative minority, uh, I'm just going to, you could just safely say we don't know what's going to happen. That would be my guess. I like to think that it would be a, a O'Toole minority, but even that doesn't really bode well for Trudeau. It seems like if we're just going to get another minority government, what was the point? We could have just waited it out, right? This whole Trudeau thing calling an election. Uh, but what's what's been going on in the news? Well, let's go over it. It's been a pretty interesting week uh, on the campaign trail. And this is a clip I wanted to start with. It's actually going to be a pretty clip light episode. It was Justin Trudeau losing his cool, kind of getting a little mad at a protester. Uh, so let's roll that clip right now. Isn't there a hospital you should be going to bother right now? So what is he referencing there? Apparently there was a lot of healthcare workers and uh, kind of like police and other types of workers that were protesting at hospitals. I saw some stuff online that was saying that they were blockading hospitals. I don't think there's ever any proof of that. I mean, that's pretty illegal. And you would have to be a specific type of evil person to block a hospital, you know? I think, it, it, you know, it, this came during the announcement where Trudeau was saying that there's going to be new specific laws the same way that judges do where you can't target healthcare workers. I mean, whatever. This is pretty inconsequential legislation considering that it's already illegal to harass like anybody. And if you're, I mean, is are people really harassing healthcare workers? I mean, I, I would assume maybe a little bit. It's already illegal though is my point. So what did Justin Trudeau say afterwards? I mean... Uh, kind of a weird thing. Obviously, he's joking, but a weird thing to just be like, hey, 
hey, uh, dickhead, what are you doing over here protesting me? Shouldn't you be uh, protesting the hospitals? <laughs> okay, weird joke to make. So Trudeau would later go on to say uh, that the guy was heckling him and saying misogynist and degrading comments to his wife, who we all know they get along very well. Uh, Trudeau and his wife. We can tell from the very passionate kisses that they share that they are madly in love, but I'm not going to go after him for that. Honestly, good for Trudeau. For once, I'm going to say if someone's uh, saying mean things about your wife, you should probably retaliate. And in mas as a matter of fact, I read one report, I think it might have been from Global News, that said that the man that was heckling Trudeau uh, challenged him to a fist fight. <laughs> uh, I... I so I would give anything to see Justin Trudeau in a fist fight with a heckler. We've already seen him box. Obviously, he's not the most talented boxer in the world. He's got uh, a few uh, bonks to the noggin in his last outing. Obviously, if you are the uh, future prime minister, it is a little bit embarrassing to have footage of you out there on the internet of you getting punched in the face that we're going to roll right now. That's pretty funny. Or a video of you falling down the stairs, which we're going to roll right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the prime minister right now. <laughs> uh, but anyway, good for Trudeau, I guess, for standing up to him. That guy, dickhead, hopefully didn't go protest at a hospital. I'd be very disappointed in anybody that did that. Like, I mean, to block the entrance. If you're a nurse, I guess you could protest in front of a hospital. But it's still poor optics. That's one of the big rules that you learn. Uh, if you're going to protest... I would avoid protests outside of a hospital during a pandemic. If not only for the reason that there is a pandemic going on still. Maybe even a block down, I would avoid that because then the newspapers can say close to a hospital. The media is yeah, hard to trust unless it's the post millennial. Moving on to our next topic, and uh, I figured this one, we're going to make it a little longer because um, there's a lot to cover. And I kind of want to go in depth and want to slow down the show a little bit. So the next topic uh, involves Trudeau, Justin Trudeau. This is going to be a pretty Trudeau-heavy episode. Justin Trudeau, Australia, the United Kingdom, and uh, the United States. Did I say that? Right? Anyway, imagine you're in a group of five eyes, you could say. Eyes meaning your intelligence agencies all kind of communicate and share information together. They're all hanging out. They're buddies. So we got uh, Joe Biden, uh, Joseph Robinette Biden, whose name is Jim Bob, by the way. Joe Robinette Biden. Jim Bob. Let's just call him Jim Bob. Uh, you got Bojo, who is uh, Boris Johnson in the UK. ScoMo, who is uh, Scott Morrison, the Prime Minister of Australia. Jacinda Ardern. Everyone remembers Jacinda Ardern. Uh, for being, uh, I, I don't know, just being really socialist. I guess she's in the New Zealand labor leader, I believe. And uh, Canada, Justin Trudeau, who, you know, everyone here knows who he is. And this is your five eyes. These are your big five intelligence agencies. Now, imagine three of those guys just go off and they didn't invite you to the pub or something. Uh, you'd feel a little left out, especially uh, if it's a specific kind of not-so-secret plan to just build influence and uh, uh, keep an eye on China. This is exactly what happened. So yesterday, uh, Jim Bob decided to announce that, hey, we're teaming up with the UK and Australia to create uh, our, a, a new group. Um, and Justin Trudeau and Jacinda Ardern, not invited. Now, you can argue New Zealand. New Zealand is a basically irrelevant country. New Zealand is to Australia what Canada is to the U.S. already. And already Australia is like an afterthought. So Australia has its own Australia. You know what I mean? So New Zealand, kind of irrelevant. But Canada, number 10 economy in the world. Group of seven country. And keep in mind, uh, when you make these international groups in the G7, uh, which was done in, I think, sometime in the 70s, early 70s, I want to say. It might have a predecessor. But in the 70s, uh, they created the Group of Seven, and whoever the president of the U.S. was at the time, I'm sorry, I can't remember, uh, specifically asked for Canada to be in the G7 because they're like, hey, 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 we're the only guys over here. Everyone else is in Europe. Italy is in there for some reason. Italy's not even a real country, really. <laughs> like it's, it's not like they have a grand sphere of influence besides like designer products. And Japan. 
All you guys are over there. We need Canada in here just so I have a buddy over here, right? That's no longer, we no longer have that goodwill with the U.S. it seems like right now. No matter how much uh, Joe Biden likes to say, oh, you know, I, I used to know your dad. And uh, me and him, we used to go golfing on the Plinko course or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Justin Trudeau isn't really invited to the party anymore. Um, this is a bit embarrassing considering that we've the U.S. is our largest trading partner. Jim Bob and you'd think Trudeau uh, get along pretty well considering they're both, they both don't have a lot going on upstairs. That's not me implying anything about anyone's health. Um, but yeah, Justin Trudeau not invited. When he was asked about this during Thursday's press conference, the day we're filming, he said, oh, you know what? Don't worry about it. This, you see, this, this whole group, this whole new group thing, it's about nuclear submarines. We don't need nuclear submarines. Who needs nuclear? We already have nuclear submarines. So I guess that was the justification for us not being invited on a group on a, a group regarding China's growing influence in the world. That's concerning to me. That makes me think that Canada's uh, image under Trudeau is not strong. And we know it isn't. I mean, how long has Trudeau been in the pocket of China? Forever. Theoretically, in my opinion. And it doesn't look good either when you have a uh, 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 MP of yours Roll his eyes. So this is a story I wanted to talk about that I almost forgot just there, but we are going to discuss. Uh, so put the article up on the screen. Watch. Liberal MP rolls his eyes when conservative candidate mentions the two Michaels. I just want to say, this is maybe bad to say, but uh, let's put it this way. If there was going to be two people uh, detained by the Chinese government, it is a nice coincidence that they both have the same first name. Because when you write headlines, it is so much easier to write the two Michaels. Imagine if their names were like Guillermo and Geronimo. Like, what would you do? I guess you could do the two Gs, but then it sounds like gangsters. And then that sounds like there's guilt on them. So thank you for the parents of Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig for naming their kids the same name. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. <laughs> anyway... Ron Oliphant, Liberal MP and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, rolled his eyes when Conservative candidate Yvonne Robertson mentioned the two Michaels who have been trapped in China for over 1,000 days. It's a long time. On Monday, federal candidates for the Don Valley West Riding met via Zoom to share their platforms and take questions. Let's roll the clip and look at how Justin hard this Trudeau guy has rolls his failed eyes. Canadians on so many levels, and it is time for a change. And incidentally, I want to say that the for, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs has a parliamentary secretary and his name is Rob Oliphant. He is the number two gentleman on the file. And not once tonight did he mention Michael Kovrig or Michael Spaver who have been detained for uh, 1,008 days. Men like my husband, women like myself, business people in our riding travel abroad all the time and they are losing confidence in global affairs Canada and our reputation abroad is eroding because of weak leadership. So I'm going to ask you all, September 20th, please. So that wasn't just like a subtle kind of a, it was a full on like, oh, Jesus Christ, lady, maybe shut up a bit, making me look bad. So just really quickly, out of my own interest, uh, let's search up the Don Valley West riding uh, on 338 Canada. I want to see exactly how well this guy's uh, polling. And of course, because it's a metropolitan kind of safe riding for the liberals, he is polling 51%. It is a liberal safe seat. He's in no danger of losing his jobs. He can roll his eyes to do two detained Canadians as much as he wants. He can roll his eyes so hard his glasses fall off, as they almost did in that video. He had to adjust his glasses after. So this guy's in no, uh, no risk of losing his job. He's going to get that nice pension. He's going to keep his seat. You would think that he would have a little more class, is all I'm going to say. Uh, what else is in the news? Well, Aaron O'Toole, uh, he's kind of, look, is he a perfect candidate? No. He's a little boring, again, not very conservative, pretty much a centrist. Uh, Aaron O'Toole, he's kind of flip-flop on a couple things. And one of them that I, I really wanted, to, uh, uh, wanted him to stick on, stay true to, was his promise to defund the CBC. 
He's flip flop on this. We've seen him go from straight up saying we we are going to defund the CBC when he was a candidate for the Conservatives, uh, all the way down to we are going to reassess their position as an institution, which basically means like I don't know, I guess give them less money. Okay, halfway there, not quite. Flip floppy again, uh, but on. Thursday, again, Thursday was a big news day. We saw that Chris Selly of the National Post asked Aaron O'Toole about his commitment to ending the media bailout. Uh, and O'Toole responded, I've said as part of this modernization, looking at the public interest mandate of CBC, we also have to look at the end, the uh, ending the direct government support of media. Now, I like that. Obviously, the post millennial, we don't get any money from <laughs> the conservative, sorry, the liberal uh, government. Uh, we are funded by our ads. As you can probably tell, we have a lot of ads. And uh, donors, so thank you to them. But uh, uh, this is something that O'Toole should really drive home. It's difficult to run a campaign that's dependent on good media coverage when part of your campaign is to defund the media. So I could understand why O'Toole would be pretty pretty hesitant to just go uh, like you know full balls to the wall with this as a campaign idea, considering that the press would just kind of eat them apart because you're trying to take away, I guess, paychecks or something for failing media organizations. This is where my inner libertarian kind of kicks in, and I go, well, if you can't fund yourself, you, you shouldn't really be able to survive, especially when I'm paying for the CBC, and you run ads. And even when I use the CBC as a Canadian, I have to watch ads before I watch CBC Gem. I mean, how much money are you guys losing? A lot. The answer is nobody watches the CBC. Uh, now I just want to talk about a few things because we are running over time. So, uh, Obama, remember Obama, 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 the president of the United States, number 44, good old Obama gave his big shout out to Justin Trudeau as he has done in the past. He did it again on Thursday. Listen to that. Thursday's in the news. So Justin Trudeau, obviously polling a little bit. Uh, not great. He probably picks up his phone and goes, hey, hey Barry. Probably calls him Barry. Uh, hey, Obama, uh, my polls don't look that great. Can you uh, just give me a little shout out on the TL? Can I ask for a little bit of space on your TL? And Obama's like, yep. Uh, so he goes and let's pull up the tweet on the screen here. Uh, the article. Uh, there we go. Obama endorses his friend, <laughs> Justin Trudeau, wishes some luck in the upcoming election. Former President Barack Obama again endorsed his friend, you see the, square, the scare quotes there, Justin Trudeau saying that he wished him the best in Canada's upcoming election. And there's the tweet, wishing my friend Justin Trudeau the best in Canada's upcoming election. Justin has been an effective leader and strong voice for democratic values, <laughs> and, pr and I'm proud of the work we did together. Now let's put up his tweet from 2019. And notice a change in the tone here. I was talking to Nico earlier, and we were having a laugh over the change of the tone from 2019 to 2021. I was proud to work with Justin Trudeau as president. He's a hardworking, effective leader who takes on big issues like climate change. The world needs his progressive leadership now, and I hope our neighbors to the north support him for another term. <laughs> um, it just seems like a bit of a downgrade, you know? He seemed so enthusiastic in 2019. And then in 2021, he's just kind of like, yeah, he's my friend, I guess. Guy gives me a headache, to be honest. People calling this foreign interference. I don't really think so. Is it foreign interference? Just be like, yeah, I'm friends with Justin. I guess he's not directly endorsing him. He's just wishing him luck and calling him his friend. Justin Trudeau, uh, I would imagine benefits from these tweets. I imagine a lot of the, because O'Toole is basically a Democrat in the U.S., is a Democrat by all by every measure in the U.S. I could see a lot of uh, Obama supporters, considering his personal popularity, uh, probably benefiting uh, Trudeau again. Uh, I, I can imagine a lot of like conservatives in Canada being like, "Yeah, Obama, cool. I like Obama. He likes Trudeau. Oh shit, that's not bad." Uh, Obama's done this before, and not just to Trudeau. He did it to Emmanuel Macron, which, just by the way. Could you imagine being at a dinner with Justin Trudeau, Obama, and Emmanuel Macron if they weren't, like, you know, super high-profile people that might tell you something interesting, maybe? I mean, just how annoying Obama is. I mean, does he talk like that? I guess you could talk to him about sports. He, he's, a, he's a basketball fan. Okay, that's cool. He has, I don't know. You can follow him on Spotify. 
Trudeau, I could not imagine holding a conversation with Justin Trudeau about anything unless he's blitzed, like just drunk off his ass and he's going to tell me all the little dirty secrets that you want to hear. But Emmanuel Macron, his English is just like awful. My French is better. Um, yeah, just not, not great. <laughs> I didn't really have anywhere to go with that one, but I want to talk about it. Oh, another quick clip. Justin Trudeau calling Aaron O'Toole Stephen Harper. Pretty funny. Let's roll the clip. Mr. Harper, Mr. O'Toole. A little bit of a Freudian slip, although it was a full sentence. He's saying that uh, Aaron O'Toole will take us back to Stephen Harper days. It's still kind of funny that they're that easy in his head to mix up, considering Aaron O'Toole, again, is so much more left-wing than Stephen Harper was. Um, kind of just impossible to see how they got, ma- got that mixed up. I guess when you're talking about Stephen Harper all the time, his name might slip out of your mouth every now and then. Uh, one more thing, big shout out to the Toronto Blue Jays. If you've been, whoops, if you've been watching like I have, um, you're pretty excited right now. The bullpen seems to have come together a little bit. Um, the hitting is unreal. Bo Bichette's a gem. And one last clip and one more big, big, uh, in memoriam to Canadian, uh, and comedy just in general legend, Norm Macdonald. Uh, I love Norm Macdonald. I think everybody watching can probably say the same. Just a legend and one of the funniest people ever. Um, seriously, I'm not. I don't think I have ever been as sad or will ever be as sad about a celebrity death ever again. Uh, I've I've heard stories about Norm. Like there was this night we I hung out with Adam Egit once, uh, the the co-host for, of the Norm Macdonald Live Show, and we, we a few of us just had beers for a couple of days during Just for Laughs, and he was telling us all these great stories, Norm stories that were just fantastic. It felt like we knew him. It felt like everybody knew him. It's like losing your uncle, your favorite uncle. Uh, so let's just end the show on a clip of uh, Norm Macdonald talking about Justin Trudeau. This is a great line. And thank you again for watching. My name is Roberto Wakerel Cruz. Make sure to go down to the links below. Check out our Rumble. Rumble, young man, Rumble. It's a great way to support the Post Millennial that is not through an evil, spooky corporation like YouTube, who I hope are uh, not going to censor this episode because of how mean I've been to them. And go check out Kubera. Kubera, again, track all your assets in one place. It's so much easier than tracking assets in several places. Why would you want to do that when there's an app, a service, a website like Kubera? Track all your assets in one place, traditional and crypto. Supports global banks, brokerages, stocks, and currencies. As simple as a spreadsheet, Kubera. Thanks again. And here's the Norm clip. Toodaloo. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Norm McDonald, and this is five pieces of advice for hosting a Canadian award show. Number one, uh, mention uh, what a hot piece of ass Justin Trudeau is.